Hello, Home Slices is here with Home Slice Adulting coming to you from the car in the morning. Um, I know you guys won't be able to see me, but you know, you can just listen, which is, you know, I don't do nothing special on camera anyway. Let me tell y'all something. So this is the fourth time that I have had to record this video and it annoys me <laughs> a whole bunch um, because I, I tried recording the video once and I had too much stuff on my phone so the video would not stay on my phone because my storage was too full so I recorded it a second time live and somehow it got deleted by me and I was like um I didn't intentionally delete the video so I tried to redo the video in the middle of the week and yet again it um my phone didn't have enough storage and didn't store it so I'm, I'm kind of over it but there's something that's a little like OCD in me that I can't have um, a video that's been skipped so I kind of have to have this on my channel and because I've recorded this video like three times now I um, I should know my review backwards and forwards so um, Let's get started, okay, <laughs> for the fourth time. Um, Y'all, I'm really annoyed by this, but whatever. So, we start off in uh, with Portia being Portia. She wants to get into acting. Um, it's good to see her, you know, explore different industries and stuff because I feel as if her days on Real Housewives of Atlanta are numbered. So, you know, the more stuff that she has to do outside, of Real Housewives of Atlanta, the better for her, you know, I think. But moving on, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not impressed with, with, uh, Portia's acting chops, but I will say that acting is one of those things that you can study and get better at. So hopefully she does, and maybe that's something that she can be, you know, famous for besides being messy or ticky. So moving on, um, uh, next, uh, see who we talk about next um i guess we'll talk about oh the dinner the dinner that nini um or the dinner that sheree was having with nini and kim and so they get together and they talk about different stuff one of the things they talk about is how um sheree is dating tyrone the con artist <laughs> so um and interestingly enough, Kim shows like a very tender side of herself where instead of being all, um, you know, Kim, she's like, you know, don't let anybody tell you to not, you know, be with the person you love just because they're in prison or whatever. And I was like, look, this side of Kim is interesting. Like, you would never think she would pimp out her daughter for John Legend tickets, you know, with how sweet she's being to Sheree right now. But whatever. They also talk about something that um about candy now unfortunately these ladies keep coming for candy and i feel like at some point she's gonna get tired and start getting you know lawyers involved or whatever like she said but um now here's something that i firmly believe because we all know that it's been kind of in social media about kim explaining herself but um when Kim was talking about candy and she said, I wouldn't let her eat my box, I took it to mean that she wouldn't, like, she wouldn't let candy touch her with a 10 foot pole. That's the kind of connotation that I got from her saying, I wouldn't let candy eat my box. Now, Sheree being messy, thought that it meant that Candy offered to eat Kim's box and Kim rejected Candy, which isn't the case. But because Kim doesn't have any integrity, instead of stopping Sheree's train of thought before it derailed and destroyed the whole town, um, Kim, you know, didn't say anything, which led everybody to believe that um, Candy offered to eat Kim's box. And so I think it was just a misunderstanding. And because Kim doesn't have, you know, the integrity of a, you know, uh, fruit fly, she uh, can't, <laughs> she didn't correct Sheree when she really should have. And everything just kind of spun out of control. So that's my firm belief on, you know, what happened. Anyways, moving on. Um, 
they call Nene because it's been like an hour or so and she hasn't arrived. And uh, she's like, oh, y'all didn't get the memo? I'm not coming because I have elephants in the room with Sheree, but a whole bunch of elephants in the room with Kim. And I feel like a private conversation needs to be had. So, um, you know, next thing you know, after they get off the phone with Nene, they start talking about her and Kim says something about Nene being on drugs, which is problematic. We'll talk about that later. Um, and I, that's all I can remember from that particular, you know, part of the show. But moving on, we are going to talk about Cairo. No, Cynthia. Let's talk about Cynthia first. So Cynthia is hosting a uh, back to school, school supply drive at the Baylor Agency, which I think is super cool. Anytime the ladies do anything community oriented, I think it's wonderful. It takes the focus off of them being so uh, mean and catty towards each other sometimes. So I thought that was really cool. And um, Will shows up and he's not empty handed and um, he says that he's taking you know, a trip to Brazil, and Cynthia is worried, <laughs> because we all know there are some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people in Brazil, and uh, of course, Kenya had to bring up the fact that there's legal prostitution, I wasn't aware of that, and I'm not even sure if it's true, but, um, you know, Will is like, oh no, I'm just going for the Jesus statue, um, and it's like, he might be going to do another TV show, is what he might be doing. <laughs> But anyways, um, you know, Will, uh, oh, Kenya has to pull, Kenya has to pull Cynthia Bailey to the side because Cynthia is kind of like geeking out over Will. And on one hand, I think it's like kind of cute that, um, Cynthia is so giddy when Will comes around. And then on the other hand, it's like, all right, are you 50 cent or are you 15 cent? Cause it's like, <laughs> you'd be, you know, tripping out when he comes around. And so, um, the king is trying to tell her, you know, you know, you know, pump your brakes a little bit. And Cynthia's like, well, you know, I probably should listen to my newly married friend, even though I have bottles of ketchup that are older than her relationship with her new husband. <laughs> that she still hasn't met yet. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I like when they throw a little fun shade and not like the nasty moon shade. But anyways, moving on, um, we'll talk about Sheree. And we see Sheree at her house and Cairo comes over and he has groceries and charcoal and he's gonna make dinner for him and his mom. And y'all, so, I will admit that I have always found Cairo to be a bit of a dullard. Um, we all know that he is an attractive young man. Um, or, you know, he even tried his hand in modeling. He might still be doing that. But, you know, sometimes there's a stereotype that a lot of attractive people lack personality. And um, Cairo kind of seemed to be on that spectrum of lacking personality. Uh, <laughs> just because like he didn't talk much I mean he might just be a little camera shy I don't know but I had a perception of Cairo and he totally destroyed it by coming home with this really sweet gesture and it's like sometimes because I personally feel like Sheree is full of crap um I don't consider <laughs> how much her children love her and I just thought that was a very sweet gesture and it made me think of Cairo in like a really different light so I thought that was very sweet so um Sh Sheree is being a little sneaky teenager and you know chilling on the balcony talking to prison bay and um y'all I'm so over it I will say it again Sheree needs to dump this man and I mean dumping somebody who's in prison shouldn't be that hard he's not gonna be there you got you have to dump him over the phone that makes things easier but anyways she's like oh my back is still hurting from the car accident he's like <laughs> well i got something for you no you don't you're behind bars in a federal prison you don't have anything for her bad back okay dang it like how much of a relationship can you have over the phone see i don't think long distance relationships work I find that long distance only works if you have established a relationship and then you um and then you all have that separation you know geographically and uh it's only for a short period of time but considering how this guy is going to be in jail for the next four years I really 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 
don't think that it's gonna work. So, um, and then we have a problem of Sheree saying, you know, I have seen documents that basically prove Tyrone's innocence. And it's like, when did you become um, a notary public that could, <laughs> or somebody who checks the authenticity of documents to prove somebody's innocence? When did you become a lawyer? Um, I mean, the, the man is clearly a master manipulator. He has manipulated Sheree um, into lobbying for him on dang national TV. And um, I just feel like she's being, she's being foolish. And we already know that Sheree, you know, can look like a fool on her own. She doesn't need some prison man, you know, to make her look worse. So, um, I feel like she's making a big mistake, but in, moving on from that, I'm tired of talking about her mistake with Tyrone. Um, Sheree goes back into the house where Cairo is, you know, putting the finishing touches on their dinner or whatever. And, um, she had the nerve to ask him, well, how's your love life going? And <laughs> he was like, well, should I be asking you the same thing? And I was like, go ahead, Cairo. <laughs> Y'all, I saw Cairo in a totally different light this time around. And so, um, it made Sheree look worse, but uh, it made Cairo look a lot better. It was a really sweet scene for the most part. But uh, moving on, next we'll talk about this whole um, call me now for your free tarot reading, um, MBLA, spirit energy reader, whatever. So um, Nene, in her normal I'm the victim fashion, is putting together an event with an energy reader that will uh, expose everyone else's elephants in the room to make her elephant seem smaller. And here's the deal. If you really were about making peace with the other ladies, um, you would be willing to put everything out there on the table. But Nene feels like she can be withholding because she thinks that the women blame her for like all the drama in the group. And it's like... Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Worry about you, Nene. Like, if you worried about your own elephants, then you wouldn't have to, um, you wouldn't have to be the person that everybody's like, well, Nene did this and Nene did that. I mean, it bothers me about Nene, and I just, I wish that she would focus on herself instead of trying to make everybody else look worse than she looks. But anyways, um, Cynthia arrives, um, and Candy arrives, and they're the first three there, and they talk about the little boat incident where Candy was playing, you know, inspect the gadget, um, on Will regarding his television appearances and things along those lines, and again, I felt like Candy was very inappropriate, I felt like it was very hypocritical of her to do that when, you know, Todd was put through, uh, a thousand ringers trying to get, you know, her family's approval, um, regarding their marriage. But, um, anyways, Cynthia was in her feelings about it. Um, but Candy, to me, kind of felt very unapologetic. I feel like she's doing her duty, or she felt as if she was doing her duty as a friend, as messed up as it seemed in the first place. But, moving on. The other ladies start to arrive, but the thing when Candy arrived, I forgot to mention, when Candy arrived, Mbele said, well, I don't shake hands, I hug. And right away, I knew that Mbele wanted something from Candy because they showed the clip prior, <laughs> the, just a few minutes earlier, that she shook hands with both Nini and Cynthia. So the the issue that I have is that Mbele, in addition to being, you know, a liar, <laughs> Mbele wants something from Candy. I mean, it was clear to me. I feel like nobody else brought that up um, in their, you know, reviews or whatever, but it was obvious right away to me. Um, moving on, um, the other ladies start to arrive, but before that happens, Sheree is having a little kiki at her house with Portia and Kim. And um, they don't talk about anything too important or whatever. And so they all arrive. And as they're arriving, and Belly is taking their phones so that they can be fully present in the moment. And I mean, this energy reading type of thing, I would imagine, would only go on for about 
um, 30, not 30 minutes, maybe an hour, hour and a half. So they would only not have their phones for an hour, hour and a half. Most of the ladies complied, except for Kim and except for Portia. Now, um, that annoyed me. I mean, whenever you have a situation where everybody's supposed to be participating in that type of thing, and then you have somebody who doesn't want to cooperate, it just puts a damper on the whole mood. So the energy in the room was already bad. Uh, Kim was saying, uh, you know, well, I have six kids. And Candy was like, well, um, she needs to stop with the six kids stuff because her oldest child is old enough to watch the rest of the five. And my whole point is, is that instead of having your husband be your backup and be your, you know, pizza delivery Uber Eats driver to come bring you some pizza at this event that already has food, you should have him at home watching your kids because you know that as a capable father, Croy will be there in the event that something happens and he can take care of it, whether he's able to reach you or not. So the issue I had is that if Croy stopped hanging around like a bodyguard, then he could be home with the kids and you wouldn't have to worry about having your phone because you got six kids. But moving on, um, moving on with that, um, the whole thing was kind of like a disaster. It started off weird and Bele's energy was very odd. Kenya called her intense and mean, which I kind of, I understood why she called her that because I kind of agree. But, um... She started going around the room, uh, reading people. It was very generic to me a little bit um, for some of the people. For instance, Sheree. Um, she said something about, um, you know, finishing what you start. And it's like anybody who knows how long she was working on Chateau Sheree knows that that's a part of her, you know, story. So um, I thought that was very generic. And then when she got to Nene, now, this is when I knew something was up. When she got to Nene, it was only positive stuff. It was very odd to me. Um, Nene, you have a heart of gold. You're not a little girl anymore, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, is she doing this because Nene is the person who has hired her on this, you know, platform, this national platform that can increase her business? I would assume so. But, um, you know, you don't want to talk bad about the person that, you know, just elevated your business and put you on or whatever but um anyways it gets to the point where Kim is doing these side conversations with Portia and we all know that Kim goes to psychics if y'all remember from the first season she went to um a, an older white lady psychic that told her that she was gonna have more children and that she was going to basically get married to Croy um which is pretty amazing but um because uh, Kim is such a, you know, spiritually spectacular individual, she felt that she could attack Embele's spirituality. And so they get into a little spiritual warfare. And she's like, um, Embele calls her Dixie Cup. And she's like, well, if you were really spiritual, you wouldn't be able to read me like that. Or you wouldn't read me like that. And then Embele was like, well, you have been disrespectful this entire reading. So... If you can question my spirituality based on one read, I can question your spirituality based on um, you being disrespectful and rude this entire time. So, um, uh, moving on, it gets to the point where Embele is like, hey, um, I need to give you a bath. Would you be okay with that? Um, she said, I'm, I'll bathe myself first to make sure I'm spiritually right, then bathe you so we can get off on the right foot. And the way she described that bath, I would have said no to. <laughs> I do not blame um, Kim for saying no to that that weird spiritual bath with the leaves and, and stuff and whatnot. And so in Bele, unfortunately for her, just couldn't take it anymore and she left. And so the problem... It, with that is that Embele did herself a disservice by being unprofessional and becoming off as mean and rude and intense and um, I don't know that this will help her business the way she thought it would but moving on Candy takes 
takes over because you know and Bella told her you know soon Candy will be helping me out because she has visions like you know deja vu or whatever now Candy says this isn't the first time that she's been told by a, a medium or a psychic that um, she has you know clairvoyant abilities but the, the issue that I have again is that she and Bella said out of her mouth that Candy is going to be helping her I knew she wanted something from Candy right away but moving on um <laughs> moving on <laughs> uh Candy takes over and she starts asking you know she starts off with the beef between Portia and Nene and they kind of don't want to talk about it anymore and Portia's like you're giving me the same face that you gave me you're coming off as if you really don't care that you're really not trying to fix things um and so I pretty much agree with Portia in that instance. And I felt as if if this was an elephant party, why not get rid of the oldest elephant in the room, which is the beef between Portia and Nene. And so that's one of the things that I don't like about Nene is that she's trying to make this about everybody else's beef um, to distract people from her own. But anyways, uh, moving on. Cynthia brings up the elephant in the room that's between Kenya and Kim and Kenya says well this elephant you know was born back in the day when it was um when it was Sheree's housewarming and so we all know that Sheree cut up and acted a fool and pointed out all of the things that weren't finished and weren't done in Kenya's house so Kenya had to put 20 on 10 and do the exact same thing to Sheree but because Kim was not around to really understand that little banter between them Kim decided to insert herself into the um shade that was being thrown by Kenya at Sheree's party and that's when things got out of hand between the two of them. Kim disrespectfully is on her phone instead of trying to you know at least patch things up a little bit and um I just thought that was very rude. I'm not here for Kim and Kenya, you know, at one point during the, the energy reading got disproportionately mad at Kim because Kim was doing all the side comments and it was edited very weird because Kim didn't even say anything back. But, um, Kenya was like, who the F are you? If you're not going to fully participate, you can get out of here. You're messing up the energy in the room. And so, um, while I agree with Kenya, I thought that she was too upset about it. But moving on, um, Kim, you know, was being rude, being on her phone, not addressing Kenya. So that elephant didn't get resolved. And uh, another problem was that Kim, uh, while Kenya was saying that Kim had, uh, Kim was like poking the bear at Nene's uh, housewarming. Um, and because Cynthia was there, Cynthia confirmed that Kenya was the one who was being, you know, prodded and poked at Nene's, um, event, at Nene's housewarming. And Kim was like, well, you know, Cynthia just needs to be quiet because she doesn't know what she's talking about. Cynthia was there. We all saw it. You were prodding and poking Kenya and then she got, you know, angry. I mean, come on. I just, I can't deal with, um... I can't deal with with Kim in this moment and I really wish that Cynthia had the the type of personality that would have went off on um Kim because it would have been warranted Kim needed to be gone off on okay but um anyways moving on um we get to the point where all the ladies leave and it's just Nene and Kim and they try to have a conversation about the, the things that are going on between them about their particular elephant in the room and Nene explains that this is the conversation that needed to be had before me you and Sheree sat down and have dinner because I didn't want to come off as fake when you and I have some issues you threw glasses and you acted a fool at my party and you accused me of um parking illegally in a handicapped parking space you came to my party uninvited you brought your daughter you brought your husband your daughter gets on snapchat posting bugs that are in my house i mean come on i mean every 
you show up uninvited and you cause so much drama in my house and you didn't apologize for it. She's like, well, you know, I apologize for being a coconut is what she called it. Um, did you reimburse me for the glasses that you broke? I mean, come on. There's clearly an elephant in the room that goes back to even before the housewarming, but they really don't get to the bottom of it because Kim accuses Nene of being on drugs. And that is very, very, very problematic to me. It was a grown up people party that had alcohol flowing and she just could have been a little tipsy. And it's like you accusing her of being on drugs is just very problematic and it comes off as you being nasty and feeling like Nene is you know beneath you or a drug addict or things along those lines and I just I really don't like that and they don't come to any resolve because Nene is offended that you know uh Kim would even say that she's on drugs but um moving on Kim does not need to be on this show nobody likes her um including the girls who are on the show besides Sheree and Sheree only keeps people around so she can carry bones so um y'all this is the end of my review um today later on i will be posting my review for the uh episode that aired this sunday i just couldn't something inside of me just wouldn't allow me <laughs> to um post the video for the 10th episode without having the ninth episode up already so thank you guys for watching yet again like comment and subscribe and i will see you again later today for the most current episode of real house